What's up, board game people? I'm here today with hopefully some happier news to follow the sad news from our news flash video. This news and updates video could have easily been titled Pledge Manager's Opening because there are a lot of campaigns that are entering that phase right now. Today we're covering a ton of campaigns as quickly as possible, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Before we begin, please know that all opinions expressed are my own. I don't get any money from game companies or publishers to make these videos. They're purely for you, the consumer. If I get something wrong or we disagree on something, let me know in the comments and we can discuss. If you like board games and want to keep up to date with all the latest news and happenings in the crowdfunding and retail side of the hobby, please subscribe and hit that bell icon. So first up, Waste Nights Beyond the Horizon expansion is launched on Kickstarter is completely funded and blowing through stretch goals at $170,000 at the time of filming. If you're interested in this romp through post-apocalyptic Australia and the surrounding waters and islands, check it out before the campaign closes in 10 days. ISS Vanguard has released the latest version of their rulebooks for your viewing pleasure. The rulebook is now on a two-column layout, more illustrations have been added to help with comprehension, and an index has been added. It's still subject to small changes, but it's getting very close to complete and ready for print. They're also showing off the inserts they received with their white samples. The boxes are already looking quite full, and this looks like a lot of game headed our way. The Pledge Manager for Kingdoms Forlorn is launched. You have until the end of May to take advantage of the Kickstarter prices. After that, prices will be going up. Get your pledges in now. It looks like the project will be using only two-way of shipping. Nothing new has been added in the Pledge Manager so far, but that hasn't stopped them from teasing us with even more content to come. How that will come about is still a mystery. Early bird rewards will be added to your pledges at a later date, so don't worry if you don't see them right now. The Lobotomy 2 Pledge Manager is also open. Everything listed from the campaign has found its way to the Pledge Manager with no surprises. They're allowing the last few stretch goals to be unlocked in the Pledge Manager, so we'll have to check back and see if and when that happens. Late backers are welcome, so check it out if you missed it, and the link will be in the description below. The pledge manager for MindMGMT is closed, and credit cards are being charged for any additional fees. The game has been nominated for several Dice Tower awards, and they're showing off a bit more of their next project, Harrow County. They remain on track to deliver by August, but if shipping delays continue, this may change. Mythic's latest campaign, Fran Astir, is completed with just over $1 million in funding. As a final thank you, they unlocked Bird, the last hero for the core box. In all, 135 figures plus the avatar were unlocked. Three free add-ons were added to the core box, including the Bone Swamp region, 3D scenery, and the Unexpected Allies add-on. Four expansions were added during the campaign, the All Mother's Secret, the Fog of Revolt, the Queen's Vow, and the Echoes of Abscalon. Notable add-ons include the Backdrop expansion, the region terrain elements, and the boss battle terrain elements. They also added an all-in pledge at $400 that includes most everything. Uprising Titans of the First Age is in its last days on GameFound. There may still be time to pledge if you missed it to this point. They're still rolling through stretch goals with the last one unlocking on the 13th day of the campaign. Sadly, as stated in our news flash video, Uthia Torment of Resurrection and Fierce Powers has canceled their campaign on GameFound. Daya Games is indeed shutting down. They were not getting the response they needed to successfully complete the campaign, and rather than take the money and struggle to deliver anything, they did the right thing and they canceled. Sadly, this campaign was make or break for the company, and for the time being, they're shutting down. I'm an eternal optimist, and I hope they can find a way to bounce back, and that we'll still see the expansions and the reprint in the future. My heart goes out to them, and I wish them only the best. Production for Final Girl Series 2 is in full swing. Wave 1 files have been submitted for production, and development on Wave 2 continues. We're showing off some artwork and minis for the promo Final Girls to keep our appetites sated. The pledge manager for Aeon's Trespass Odyssey has closed. They've given us a better looks at some of the Godform miniatures, but we're still not sure if the backers needed or achieved to unlock the Citrame Rishinder, whose name I probably just completely butchered. Hopefully they'll put out an update and let us know soon. Storm Sunder continues to drip feed us updates, showing off miniatures that are ready for production. A particular note is the photo showing the miniatures and numbers that will be included in the box. This is going to be a ton of plastic if it ever arrives. Atmosphere dropped a small update showing off some renders for game pieces. They're perfectly creepy and funny at the same time. If only we could get them colored like the Baron Simity render. The campaign for the reprint of the Great Wall has ended. I'll keep an eye out and let you know when the pledge manager goes live. No word yet if they're allowing late backing or not. 
The pledge manager for Solar 175 is opened on GameFound. They posted a short unboxing that really gives you a perspective on how much is included in the game. The cards and components all look great, and I can't wait to get my hands on the game. The pledge manager should be open for at least two more months. The Witcher Old World has given us an update to discuss the all too well known shutdowns in China and the fact that it will likely affect production timelines. They're continuing on pre production process from home, but production remains on lockdown at this time. They did show off some of the card backs and even more interesting, the new playmat, including slots for the mage action cards. Castles of Burgundy continues to ramp up towards their campaign. Classic Tiles won out in the first poll, and it looks like Isometric View will win out for the second. They will announce the start date of the campaign with their next update. The Pledge Manager and Late Backing is open for League of Dungeoneers. I have a link for Late Backing in the description below. This game turned out to be huge and flew under the radar of many, so if you missed out, now's your last chance to get in on the action. In the world of Frosthaven, not too much is happening, really. Physical proofs have been strapped to a snail and the poor snail's been lost in a storm. One day, they'll make their way to Isaac and production can continue. Until that time, he's been busy slaying oozes. If you missed those, the videos are available on Twitch. Tomashi has released their first development update. They're busy working on gameplay aspects added during the campaign. They also dedicated some time to address fan concerns, including giving co-op some love, refining the programming trays, and making some adjustments to HP. You can find all the details in the link below. There's a new pre-order open for Crimson Scales, the fan-made expansion for Gloomhaven. They're also releasing a new mini expansion called the Trail of Ashes, which includes five new classes, 12 new scenarios, events, items, and more. Mini and standee versions are available. Check out the link in the uh, description below for more information. The Sleeping Gods Distant Skies campaign is just days from closing. They've completed their two surprise reveals, but the even bigger news, in my opinion, is what was revealed just recently. Foreteller narration will be made available for both the original campaign and Tides of Ruin. You can grab it now at a discounted price, or it'll be more in the app in the future. Lawyer Up Season 2 is also nearing the end of its campaign. Their latest update focused on box inserts for the Season 2 box that will hold both Season 1 and Season 2 content when sleeved. This is a more than welcome addition and checks the last box on my want list for the game. This is also a cheaper one if you want to go all in. An all in pledge is only $114 and you get everything except for the play mats. The pledge manager is open for Earth Under Siege Flashpoint. You can lock in your pledges and grab anything you missed during the campaign. Late backers are also welcome. Check the link below for late backer information. Last, but certainly not least, I wanted to feature a campaign I haven't had the pleasure of covering yet. Limbo Eternal War 1.5 has launched their pledge manager, late backing on GameFound. This tactical miniature skirmish game has some of the most fantastic sculpts to hit crowdfunding in a long time, and the game looks to back up the sculpts impressively. There are many entry points to choose from, and if you want an all-in, that's available too. Check it out and let me know if you have any questions about the game. I'm sure you'll be seeing more from Limbo on the channel in the future. Well folks, that's a wrap. There was more news out there for sure, but I tried to hit the high and the low points, and the rest will have to wait for another video. I appreciate everyone who's watched this far. If you like this type of content and want to see more, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button to help our small channel grow and reach more people. I have the month in review video coming up next, likely on Monday, and a whole list of other videos that are on my backlog that should be coming very soon. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend, and play something fun tonight.